Fire away. Good afternoon. Welcome back. Kent Beam and Nine Business Group of Elevate Your Business Spotlight Interview. We have James Teague with us today. James, please introduce yourself. Most importantly, your company. And what set is your company apart from the competition? And what is it that does? Welcome. Thank you, sir. Uh, James Teague. I am the owner of My Everything Store. We're an online medical supply company. Uh, we're located here in Calgary, Alberta. Um, we're strictly e-commerce only. We have no uh, brick and mortar presence whatsoever. Um, and what sets us apart from the competition is hands down our innovation. Um, basically, this business model that I built uh, was built on on the, the premise of the problems that I saw in the existing um, brick and mortar buildings. Um, so realistically, I, I built a, a different system, a different way of doing things. And what that's part of what separates us from the competition is our, our innovation, for sure. What, what does it mean? I mean, innovation is a big word nowadays. So what does it mean for your clients, for you? How, how does innovation, how do they experience differently other than, okay, another online store, but I'm sensing there's a little more behind that when I go as a customer. So walk us through the actual, if you will, the hole in the wall, not the drill. Right. Okay. So um, typically, when you when you have uh, and in the medical supply in, uh, world is is a finicky beast to say the least. Um, it's it's not like most industries. So when a customer puts an order in on online on most stores, uh, that company will have stock available in their store, and that's it. Right. That's what they have. That's what they got, and that's the end of the story. But with us, because we're connected through all the distributors in Canada, um, we're able to source materials from all over the place. So to give you an example, a lady called up here um, not too long ago, and she was um, having a really hard time finding these trach filters for her daughter. And she called her local supplier, her main supplier that she deals with. She called everybody, and she, they all said, no, sorry, we don't have any in stock. She called us and we said, well, we don't have any stock, but we're going to find it. And that's kind of what se separates us apart. And we did through all our, our connections with all the distributors. We actually found three cases of it in Vancouver. She's in Ontario. And so we were able to wrap and ship it out to her out in Ontario, kind of saved the day. And well, not literally, it literally saved the day for her daughter. Um, and so that's what separates us, I think, from, from the rest of the companies is they'll say, Oh, yeah, so we don't have it in stock. We're, we're, we're in the mindset of we don't have it. We're going to find it. We'll, we'll get it for you one way or another. We'll find it. Excellent. No, that's a great differentiation. Um, before we hit record, we started talking online about innovation. You've you've had multiple businesses. You have existing businesses today. Um, one of the things we started talking about is innovation. So let's talk a little about innovation as it applies to your business, but more importantly, what does it mean to the world? What it means to entrepreneurs? Um, should we innovate? How do we innovate? When to say no to innovation? So um, what has been your experience with innovation? But more importantly, as we look at the world with this rapid amount of change, what advice, if any, you would give to an entrepreneur about the thing of innovation? Yeah, in innovation, I think, is is key right now and it's going to be really critical in the future like uh when it comes to artificial intelligence like we're we're delving into that big time and incorporating that into our business in every way we can um there's a saying in in the ai world and in the business community in general you know within the next five years there's gonna be two types of businesses uh ones that utilize ai and ones that are not in business and that's very true, <laughs> right? It's very true because we're able to do things like um, I, I, one of my businesses, the, my everything store, I mean, we only have one employee and we run the business more efficiently and faster than companies that have five times, 10 times our, our staff. You know, we, we don't have accountants. We have an AI. We have artificial intelligence running in the back end that crunches invoices for us, grabs the information, puts it into a Google sheet that you know we send off to our bookkeeper once a month and she reconciles the books. Um, so we don't have to have an, 
you know, an accountant or a bookkeeper to, to be running the business. Um, you know, th things like that, when we, we've built tools um, where we're able to see data that our competitors just simply can't. So when it comes to innovation in, in the business world, that's where companies really need to stop and say, you know, hey, this is a problem. And then instead of saying, hey, this is a problem, this is an opportunity. This is something like if we're running into this problem, our competitors are running into this problem. And if our competitors are running into this problem, we are, and we can find a solution to this problem. Well, now we've just one upped our competitors or, or, or taken their, you know, taken more, you know, bigger piece of the pie, taking more customers because we've, we've solved that problem. And, and we've even helped our, um, even helped our suppliers with some of their supply chain issues, you know, with innovation, um, by moving moving products, you know, faster between between provinces, that kind of thing. So I, I really think where companies and people need to look at innovation is um, how can we how can we make things better for our customers? How can we service them better and faster? And how can we solve problems? You know, and, and like I say, take problems and turn it into this isn't a problem, this is an opportunity. Okay. So Take that and let's go one step further, further and kind of go, as entrepreneurs, do we not run the risk of following versus leading and which one comes first? Are, yeah. are we are we looking at AI and then embracing it and leading our customers? Or should we as entrepreneurs be following our customers based on their needs and wants? I think it's a combination of both. Um, you know, following customers' needs and wants, absolutely imperative right you have to make sure that you are uh, giving them what they need um when they need it but by by innovating and you know and using ai as an example being able to get it to them uh, faster and easier like you know one of the things that we have in our store is a um, auto renewal subscription model um so they just set it forget it you know, uh, that way they don't even have to worry about their medical supplies if they order them on a monthly reoccurring basis. It just shows up at their door. They don't even have to think about it, nothing. We can take that um, information, we give that over to our supplier and our uh, tell our supplier, hey, every month on this date, you need these products in this warehouse for this customer. And I'm here to tell you, distributors love that because right? we're giving them a crystal ball, right? Sure. So um, it, it really benefits everybody across the board, for sure. But you, you do have to be careful that you're not, you know, jumping like using AI as, as an example again, jumping down that path because that's the buzzword and everybody's doing it. So I got to now jump into AI and I got to do it. Because if there's no real solid application for it and it's not going to solve a problem, then you're just wasting money and resources. You know, I think that's an important differentiation, distraction versus opportunity. Yeah. Oh, huge. Let's let's go one step further, going a little bit further down the rabbit hole. Share with us an example of a business or somebody you have done business with in the last six or 12 months where AI or artificial intelligence or innovation needs to happen because it frustrated you, it pissed you off, as opposed to what you're doing. It's more kind of like, can we give more of a commonplace example of something that's out there? Maybe it's a plumber, electrician, or somebody that's a little more commonplace to kind of go, I had this personal experience and here are some things they could do down that space. Do you have one of those? Oh, yeah. Dozens. <laughs> so one of the one of the ones that pissed me off was actually with a a, a supplier. Uh, we we kind of fired them basically because they were um, stuck in the stone age. Like we would put an order in with them, and and our our part of our business model is speed. You know, we we are we are there is no grass growing on this mound. We are moving fast, and so. I have to phone them up and say, "Hey, did you did you ship that product? Where's the tracking code?" And they would have literally the girl put the phone down on the desk and said, "I'll be right back." And then I thought to myself, "I'm like, did, did she just leave?" And then she comes back, she's huffing and puffing, and I'm like, "Did you? Where did you go?" And she said, "Well, I had to go in the back to the warehouse, right? Because the guys when they they print off the um, the tracking code and they put it into a filing cabinet in the back." 
And then so I had to go get the paper out of the filing cabinet and come back. And I was like, what? <laughs> What's my God? And you know, this is a large supplier. You know, I was like, are you kidding? Like, no, we can't, we can't operate like that. We can't, we have to be fast. Our customers, you know, they need to know this information. We got to get the tracking information to them as quick as quickly as we can. Um, and, and just as you were saying about an electrician or plumber, uh, we just did a renovation on our house here and we had an electrician um, in our house. Great guy, super good at his trade, um, but he was, you know, a one man show and he had um, his wife was doing the the accounting and the, and the books. And when they would go and do a small job like this was, you know, a, a renovation. So it was, you know, a little bit longer, but when they go to do a small job, you know, he'll just hand write them out, you know, an in or like a receipt for their stuff, give them a copy. And then he takes that copy home, you know, and then he hands that to his wife who has to then manually enter it. And I said, wow, dude, you know, like you could, you could be saving yourself so much time and effort if you just, you know, implemented these new strategies, you know, and he was saying, well, we can't keep up with the inventory. And I said, well, you can connect your system to your supplier system so your inventory is their inventory and it's automatically updated and he, his eyes are the size of dinner place so you can do that and i'm like oh yeah you can do that quite easily without a lot of expense you know and it will save you know your wife will be able to retire she doesn't have to do that anymore right? <laughs> or she can go do whatever she wants maybe she can go golfing um right. you know or do whatever she wants but i said yeah no that's that's sort of the um uh, what I've seen so far, like I said, I got dozens of examples. Yeah, no, that's that's a really good example of just, you know, for for everybody listening, it's as simple as paper. If you're touching mm -hmm. it and you're handling paper, there's probably a better way. If you have anything in your business that is inventory that you resell, that you process, there's a better way. Uh, great yeah. insight. Thank you very much, James. Um, yeah, you bet. When you look back over the years in business as an entrepreneur, as an employee, what has been your greatest lesson? AK, what is the one thing you you know now that you wish you would have known 10, 15, 20 years ago? What's the greatest lesson? Hmm. I, I want to say um, calculated risks. Um, yeah, calculated risk. And, you know, and I want to throw and really emphasize the word calculated. Um, taking, you know, wild, crazy, um, unbaited risks with without... Um, without having a plan in place that's the, to me that's just crazy i mean I've, I've recently talked to somebody that was doing that with you know jumping off jumping off without a net kind of thing and it was like wow you're you're very brave um but having taking calculated risks and testing the waters and testing things and seeing you know like okay i think this might work let's let's do a test pilot on this and see if it works like we're actually doing that right now with, with a piece of software. We're testing it out with a few, few clients, you know, to say, hey, do you like this? Is this going to, you know, will this help you? Will this help you solve one of your problems? And so I think just by not doing the status quo, like this is what we've always done. This is how we've always done it. Um, you know, let's, let's take some risks and experiment with some stuff and, and see if we can figure out a better way of doing things, because that's what it really all comes down to is, is, you know, is that innovation, that trying new things, trying to streamline things, make things faster, better, easier, because it is true with, with AI, that, that is a tsunami that's coming. That is, you know, most people don't even understand the, the breadth of, of what's actually coming towards us. Um, and so, yeah, embrace it for sure. Okay, fun, fun question. If we can, if you can, think about your definition on day one as an entrepreneur. What was your definition of success? If you should open up your shop, I'm in business, success looks like what? What did that look like to James way back in the day? Uh, that looked like me not being in the business anymore. Okay. Yeah, no, it, I mean, and cool. I don't mean- Like you sell no, it no, off, you get rid of it, no, or was no, it just I, no, I not mean, operating? Not operating, it, it runs without me. Um, and that's my PI firm um, runs without me. I, I don't do anything in it at all. Uh, every once in a blue moon, I have a meeting with my staff and, you know, and talk to a client here and there kind of thing. But the best, 
business, and this is really the only way you're going to be able to sell a business if you want to, is if you don't have to have any part of it. You're like the absent CEO, if, if you want to call it that. And that has been my my goal from day one. It's not that I'm lazy and I don't like to work, uh, but I wanted to build a company around and in such a way that it doesn't even need me. That it's even there's systems and systems in place and processes and procedures and everybody knows what they're doing. And I can go, not that I don't, I'm not a golfer, but I could go golf if I want, you know, or go do whatever, you know, or start another business, which is kind of what I did. Amazing. So ultimately now time for the shameless self plug. Who's your ideal client? Um, and where should they find you? Okay. Who is my ideal client? Um, my ideal client is really anyone that has ever struggled and had issues with their current supplier for their medical supplies, right? Um, anybody that's, you know, run into problems and, you know, like I am just constantly <laughs> hitting the brick wall. This is so frustrating. This is stressful for me because if, if you're using medical supplies, you know, you've already got enough stuff on the go, right? Um, you don't need that added stress of, not being able to use medical supplies. Um, and yeah, if they want to find me, it's myeverythingstore.ca. Tremendous, James. Thank you for the insight. Love the storytelling. Love you taking the time to share with us and the other entrepreneurs kind of some do's and don'ts and some how-tos about what to do, like what, what to avoid, and more importantly, how to start navigating an ever-changing world. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Take care.